Here let's talk about probability mass function for discrete random variables. We have a function that is called a probability mass function or we also use this acronym of PMF. And what probability mass function is, is a description of how to compute probabilities associated with a random variable. If your random variable, for example, is x, right, and that x is the observed time between two customer arrivals, and you want to calculate some probability associated with that, let's say, what is the probability that this time between two arrivals is less than five minutes, okay, uh, the PMF function helps you with that. How does uh, that help you? Here I want to introduce you to a notation that is sometimes confusing uh, for uh, PMF functions. This notation, f of x at x. Uh, so what that means is f of random variable x at point x. Okay, so in this formula, this x here is the random variable, is the notation for your random variable. You know, when we define x, for example, as observed time, we put that x here so that we know uh, we're defining the probability mass function for that random variable x. So that is a notation for a random variable. But this small x here is a specific value, is a number essentially, that this uh, the random variable can get. You know, we talked about the range of a random variable, which is the set of all values that a random variable can get. This little x here can be any of those values. If the time between two arrivals can be five minutes, this is going to be, for example, five. So this is a specific number in the range of x and that is capital X the random variable anyway this f of x at point x is the same as probability of random variable x being equal to this little x. For example, uh, you know, probability of x being equal to 5 minutes is the same as saying f of x at 5. Now, you might ask this question that, okay, how do we get the PMF? Where is it? You either construct it logically or it's given. So it's one or the other. So when you construct it logically, it's going to be a list of values of f of x at x for x in the range of that random variable x. For example, it's going to be something like this. f of x at x is equal to, let's say, 0.1 or 10 percent. When x is equal to 0, uh, it's going to be 0 0.05 when x is equal to 1, 0 0.2 when x is equal to 2, and 0 0.65 when x is equal to 3. And that's a valid PMF function. These are all the little x values, basically the numbers that can go in here, and these are the probabilities. So in other words, this one is probability of x being equal to 0 or f of x at point 0. Similarly, this is probability of x being equal to 3 or f of x at point 3. Another way of showing a PMF function is using a generic formula, you know. Well, it might be that f of x is something like 1 over x squared plus 1, something like that. That you plug in the uh, you know x value that you have, and this would be the probability. 
right? So in those cases, you have a generic formula that works uh, for every x value. Any PMF function has very two important properties. And the first thing is it has to be non-negative, meaning that f of x at any point x is greater than or equal to 0. And that's for all x's. Because at the end of the day, f of x is, is a probability. And probability cannot be negative. You cannot have a probability of something be negative 10%. So probabilities are always non-negative. And the other property is it has to sums up to 1. So sums up to 1. Meaning that if I add these, they have to sum up to 1. Otherwise, it's not a valid PMF function. And in this case, they do. You know, 0.1. 0 0.05, 0 0.2, and 0 0.65, it adds up to 1, meaning that it has to cover the entire sample space. The probabilities should add up to 100%. Or mathematically, you would say summation over x on f of x of x is equal to 1. So these two are main uh, characteristics or properties of a PMF function. If you want to check whether a PMF function is valid or not, you got to check these two. Very similar to PMF function, we have cumulative distribution function or CDF. Now, what is the difference between CDF and uh, PMF? Well, first of all, the notation is a little different. Here we have a capital F of x at point x and what it means is probability of x less than equal to x and that's very important pmf let me remind you it's f of x at point x and the definition of pmf is probability of x equals to any x value and i want to emphasize here that this is equal this is less than equal Right. For example, probability of x less than or equal to 5, this is CDF, which can be calculated right, by adding up a bunch of PMFs. Probability of x equals to 0 plus probability of x equals to 1 all the way to probability of x equals to 5. And each of these can be found from a PMF function. So the summation of appropriate values of PMF will give you the CDF. And that's what it says here. Summation of appropriate values of the PMF. So here you can see the direct relationship that exists between PMF and CDF. What we can say is CDF, or cap f of x at point x, is probability that x is less than or equal to x, which is summation over the PMF function for those values, for those values, that are less than or equal to this x. And here I want to uh, be clear that this x refers to here, this x. If you add up all the values in the range of the random variable that is less than this x, and you add up their probabilities, that will give you the CDF. At this point, this PMF and CDF might be a little abstract. Uh, you probably don't have a good uh, sense of these two. We're going to look at two good examples in the next video to get this more clear.